So, Art, um, I know that glaciation happened in this area, as in, you know, all of Canada, and uh, I know that you know a little bit about this. I was wondering if you could elaborate some of the geological history of this area. The, uh, <clears throat> the ice moved across from the North Shore Mountains where the glaciers uh, formed, and so they moved in a direction approximately the way we walk up to the pit here and uh, carried rock and uh, rock dust and so on down into this area. Uh, and at that time, we had about a kilometer and a half of ice over the top of it. So anything that was underneath the glacier is incredibly compressed, very, very high density. And then on top of that, we got these coarse materials because the outwash waters, the outflow waters from the glacier carried a lot of the silts and clays out into the Strait of Georgia. The other thing that happened was that this huge mass of ice compressed the land surface down to sea level. So where we were standing was beachfront property in those days. Wave washed and again uh, resulted in the uh, coarse textured materials, uh, parent materials that uh, we have here. Okay. How else could we characterize the parent materials for this site? Well, they're, uh, they're very uh, coarse textured, uh, lacking in the, uh, the, the fine uh, mineral materials that provide uh, uh, surface area and charge and water holding capacity. Um, there are also uh, quite a few stones in here that, mm -hmm. that you get uh, with uh, these glacial materials that haven't been uh, sorted particularly well. And that's uh, an issue for management. Uh, it's, okay. it's a limitation on this site. But uh, in terms of podzolization, the podzolization process, we have uh, the main condition, well-drained, fairly coarse textured soils that allow for leaching. Mm -hmm. uh, the other factor that's important is one that we can see in the background that perhaps was visible as we walked up here, and that mm -hmm. is the coniferous forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, acidic, uh, the type of, um, litter that comes from that added to the process and, and the leaching and acidification process. So I know that there are 10 orders in the Canadian soil classification system and here we have a podzol. I'm wondering what makes a podzol different from the other orders? Well I think uh, the, the thing that strikes one when you look at them is color. Okay. That's uh, by and large once you, you get below surface uh, horizons which are darkened by organic matter uh, is the bright uh, rusty red colors of oxidized iron. That, that really shows up in, uh, in comparison to um, the glycols and uh, the alluvial soils just to the south of us here, they're very gray in color. You don't get okay. any of that kind of uh, bright uh, orange uh, a rusty color and that has implications obviously for uh, a number of issues uh, for this site as a management uh, issue. Okay. I'm very eager to see some of these bright colors so let's go ahead and get closer to the soil profile and see what details we can see here. Okay. Art, in doing research looking at soils books and soil survey report I noticed that what I've read about podzols in terms of a soil profile is somewhat different from what I see here. Can you tell me why that is? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the philosophy in describing soils for soil survey reports usually has the, uh, the pedologist or the soil surveyor describing as a natural profile. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, instead of being here, they would be in the forest uh, looking at natural horizons. We're on, an, on a site that's been cleared and has been farmed for 30 to 40 years, and you can see behind us a uh, cultivated field. And this profile here reflects the AP horizon that you get in a managed uh, podzol soil. So the top layers, the top horizons, the organic, uh, her, the litter layers, and the AE horizon and the top of the B horizon have now been homogenized and we can see lots of organic staining here mm -hmm. from the uh, plant roots from the, um, the crops that have been grown here and perhaps compost and manure applications. Excellent. Okay. So you were talking about the AP horizon and I, I can see where it begins and then this really nice demarcation. Um, 
tell, tell me a little bit more about when I look at this AP horizon, what should I be noticing? Like what are important characteristics of this? Well, I think uh, for this or any any horizon, one of the things that we're interested in is depth of rooting, and okay. that that would be also described in the soil survey report. Uh, in this site here, the um, agricultural crops uh, that we have here are rooted down to approximately 20 centimeters. Very few roots extend deeper than that. There are a few places where there are. Uh, there are deeper organic uh, features that the roots follow, but by and large, they're in the, in the top zero to 20, and the decomposition of those roots and so on are uh, contributing to this dark, uh, organic-rich uh, surface horizon here. Mm -hmm. When we get below that, the color change that we observe, it tends to reflect more the iron that has precipitated in that horizon as it, it has E alleviated into that horizon. Yes, the color differentiation here is is striking. Um, can you, so you were mentioning uh, alluviation. T tell me more about how that impacts the color and, and this B horizon. Mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you look at a, um, uh, a natural podzel, you'll see a fairly shallow five to 10 centimeters of organic material on the surface uh, that's decomposing and contributing organic materials to leach into the soil, but just immediately below that will be a much lighter uh, AE horizon. And these can be very striking or hardly present, but that's the zone where the iron and aluminum uh, is alluviated or, or leached out and down below that in the B horizon is where it reprecipitates and accumulates. And so the colors then begin to darken up or, or to, to become more rusty, more orange where the iron oxides are, are accumulating. Mm -hmm. When we were digging the pit, we had a rock and uh, perhaps you could talk a little bit more about what's happening You probably hit more than there. one rock in here, yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> Uh, many, many rocks. Right. <laughs> uh, but this one is, is quite a, a, a useful one for this purpose because you can see uh, the iron uh, oxide precipitation on the surface and you, mm -hmm. can, you can scrape that off and see that the, the, color of the, uh, the color of the rock is much wow. lighter. So that shows the iron that's, that's come out of the, the top of the profile and it's re-precipitating down at depth where this rock mm -hmm. would have come from originally. Yeah. Okay, Rachel, we were just looking at the uh, stone there with a nice uh, uh, iron oxide deposit on it. And I think I gave it kind of a, a very general uh, uh, color description. But we know that if you look at the soil survey reports that they have much more precise uh, description. So maybe I'll uh, just take a, a piece uh, or, or a, a little sample from the BF uh, horizon and we can uh, let you talk about that. Excellent. Wow, that's beautiful color. So I have the Munsell soil color chart. Um, one of the ways that soil scientists determine how to how to discuss the color of soils. Um, in the book, there are around 360 paint chips, uh, which, which you use to identify the color of the different soil types or soil horizons. Uh, here, the soil that we have looks to be a 7.5 YR, which stands for yellow red. We were looking at the Munsell color chart for the soil and the rock from the B horizon. Let's look some more uh, and see what other interesting aspects of the B horizon we have here. Oh, good idea. The, uh, the soil that we're looking at here is uh, relatively heterogeneous compared to a lot of other soils you might look at, particularly in some of the other orders. If you think about this site naturally, you had big trees, you had differences in the amount of water flowing through the soil, soil development varied quite a bit. Plus, when the site was cleared for agriculture and uh, there was burning, there were, there were stumps to get out of here and stones to pick. So we end up with a very uh, heterogeneous uh, profile here. 
with some features that reflect both the, the variability in the natural vegetation and, and in subsequent management. So if we look at the profile, one interesting thing that we see here is bits of charcoal, uh, probably left over from the natural uh, forest that would have been subject to fires and uh, root channels uh, would burn very slowly at low oxygen levels tending to charcoal. We also have some kind of a feature here that extends deeper and the colors there are suggestive of mm -hmm. an AE horizon. The lighter, uh, more leached horizon that uh, in, in a natural soil you would tend to find more up here, but this sort of tongues down deeper into the B. When I was digging yesterday, when I was getting to the bottom of the B horizon, it was becoming quite difficult. Um, I couldn't dig any more shovelfuls. Something like that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Hey. And I don't think it was my lack of upper body strength. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we've been talking up till now primarily about the A or the AP horizon in this managed uh, soil and the B horizon. But uh, beneath that, we have a C horizon. And in uh, most soils, that C horizon designates material that is like the A and B, but it just hasn't been uh, subject to the soil forming processes the same way as the A and B. So it would be the parent material with very little modification from the time that the soil processes started. This site here at UBC Farm is uh, somewhat different in that um, underlying the soil profile we have a 2C horizon. Um, it is uh, labeled Roman numeral 2C because it is a different geologic uh, strata. And uh, it's the layer that the glacier rode across and compacted. And so the soil forming processes that gave us this podzol uh, did not uh, affect that 2C horizon in this case. A soil survey report also includes information regarding chemical, biological, and physical characteristics of the soil profile. So let's discuss uh, beginning the, with the physical characteristics of this profile here. Okay, the first thing that, uh, that you notice here, and I think you enjoyed uh, digging around all the rocks in here, and, and that is that uh, these soils tend to have a fairly high uh, proportion of the soil volume occupied by uh, stones and, and gravel. So those don't hold water, they don't hold nutrients, and we need to factor that in, the, the percent uh, coarse fragment content. Then if we look at the, uh, the finer materials, uh, then we would be interested in soil texture. Mm -hmm. Texture being the relative proportion of sand, silt, and clay. And uh, in the field, uh, a person who's describing soils in the field would start by doing a hand texturing. So. So you can indulge your fantasies about making mud pies and that sort of thing. And uh, we do then is to see if it will stick together, if it will cohere. And so if it does, it will form a ribbon when you do this. And you can see that it doesn't. It falls apart. Okay, so that's indicative of a fairly coarse texture, not much clay. But if I rub my palm I can feel lots of grittiness okay that's the sandy part of it mm -hmm. so a good uh, experienced uh, person uh, who characterizes soils can very closely define the textural class of the soil the uh, the, the next um, place to look uh, the next feature to describe would be soil structure and that then reflects the way in which these primary particles, the sand, silt, and clay, primarily sand and gravel in this case, how they fit together into secondary particles. And uh, in this soil, because it's so coarse, there really is uh, very little stable structure here. It would be described as uh, a single-grained structure. Mm. 
uh, as opposed to a clay soil where the clay tends to cause things to form aggregates and um, where the structure then is, is much more dependent on management in, in recent history. Whereas this is reflecting the, the, um, the uh, characteristic of the parent material much more so. So the single grain structure, one of the ways I can tell that by looking at it is how it looks very sandy when I look at the profile. Is that how I would determine that? When, when you uh, take your, your knife and you dig it out, uh, there's a little bit of, it, it sticks together a little bit into um, larger aggregates, but these, these come apart very easily. Mm. There's not much holding those together except the, the plant roots. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the water stable structure on these soils is very, very, very low to non-existent. Okay. So we heard about the physical characteristics for this soil. One of the other things to know about is the biological characteristics. We saw the plant roots and that, that's one of the things we can tell from the field. I found one earthworm while digging the pit. And other than that, uh, there's not a lot of other things that I can tell by looking at it with uh, the naked eye about the biology going on um, in this soil here. I can determine a little bit about the chemical characteristics. So what I'm going to do is take a sample from each of the two top horizons. So we have the A horizon and then the B horizon. And you can see side by side uh, the, the nice dynamic difference in color. I'm going to take a pinch of each and put it in this well here so that I can test the pH of the two horizons. I do that by putting several drops of a reagent along with the pinch of the soil in the well. And then I add just a little bit of a powder, which will change the color of the liquid in the cell to signify what pH we have. So I'm grinding up the powder and mixing. And we'll take a moment for each to let the reaction begin to take place. I'm using a fairly standard but a basic pH kit. There are uh, testers that you can have with electrodes in order to determine pH. You will be able to see, even though very little time has passed, there is a difference in color between the A horizon, which is this one, and the B horizon. The A horizon definitely looks to be uh, the color 6.4 which would uh, signify 6.5 pH. The B is a lighter green, signifying 6.0, likely because of liming with the agricultural land, this, this upper A horizon is going to have, we would expect that it would have a higher pH than the B horizon, and this test is showing that it does. We've gone over a lot of the characteristics of this soil, the chemical, biological, physical. Now your responsibility is to determine what are the management choices that you would make for this soil and this land.